Well, here's my car that I bought for $100. 1998 Toyota Camry LE. About 190,000 miles. The exterior's in decent shape for the age and mileage considering uh, scratches and dents and everything on this one. Of course it's a work truck but this one's been kept in okay shape. Rear tires have a uh, decent tread left on them. Uh, all the power windows and locks work. Power mirrors work. Um, there's only a couple uh, there's only a couple Mars inside. There's a little hole there in that seat and there's another one right there but other than that the interior is very clean the front tires need to be replaced the bumper's got quite a bit of paint peeling and it needs to be resecured in several areas 2.2 liter inline four cylinder engine <laughs> this fender here was just replaced it's got a couple scratches on it. Probably need to paint that just for looks, really, though. Can't really open the doors right now because they hit the trailer. It's about as far as I can open them. But I can open the hood. There we go. It is drivable, but I wouldn't recommend driving it, and you'll see why. I drove it up onto the trailer. And uh, here's your first tip why. Take a good look at that oil on that dipstick. It is more thick and black than diesel oil. And it's got silvery specks in it. Not a good sign. It's also got that typical power steering fluid leak on this model. That was one of the bigger problems with the Camrys. But the transmissions are good, and when properly maintained, the engines are great too. Now if we go back uh, and do a little research on the internet, you will see that this vehicle was one of several vehicles, or engines I should say. There were a few more from Volkswagen, a couple Saabs, there were some Hondas and Chryslers as well that fell into this category. They had big problems with engine sludging. And that's why I'm a firm believer in the 3,000 mile oil change for most people. If you do all highway driving, 5,000 is fine, but I go 3,000 miles on all my vehicles. Basically what happened is this engine sludged up. And I would imagine all the rod bearings are gone by now. Don't know about the crankshaft bearings. The biggest problem is it was driven for about I'm going to say a good 10-15 minutes with the engine sounding the way it's going to sound when I start it up here. Sounds nasty. That's severe rod knock. If you can imagine this vehicle being driven for about 10, 15 minutes like that on the highway, it's not good.
Okay, you remember back when you were a little kid in school, the worst sound it, well, maybe I should say one of the worst sounds you could hear is fingernails on a chalkboard. Well, for a mechanic, this sound that you just heard is that same type, whatever. I don't know how exactly to word this. I'm kind of shooting the video as I go. But basically, for a kid in grade school to hear fingernails on a chalkboard is the same thing for a technician to hear this kind of knocking coming from an engine. Not pretty. So I'm on the look for a new engine for it. It's a piece of cake to get out of here. As you can see, there's plenty of room. So I'm going to find another engine and drop it in here. I just couldn't pass a car up for 100 bucks. Not bad at all. So there it is, $100, not too bad. I'm gonna throw a new engine in there and hopefully have a decent running car.